grace and peace be with you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to this online worship service of Highland Presbyterian Church on this All Saints Day. This day in the church where we celebrate and remember the gifts and lives of those saints of the church who have gone before us and the assured promise of the resurrection that we know in Christ Jesus. We invite you to find on our website, highlandpres.org, resources for this worship service, including an online companion bulletin, uh, links to our online friendship pad, for we love to know who has shared in worship with us, and links to online giving. And while you're there on our website, click around and see a variety of ways that ministry is happening through this congregation and see how your gifts might be shared in the work that we do together. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for this time of worship.
a thousand days is but a moment to God. All flesh is as grass and withers away. Still, we treasure our days with those whom we love and reluctantly give them back to God. On this day, we thank God for the saints in our lives. Let us worship God and let us pray. You are our God and we are your people. And we are grateful that you have claimed us as your own. You have set us in the company of saints past and present among those who have made bold witness to your goodness and your truth. Your word, ancient and ever-present, opens up new futures where we would see no way forward. Write the stories of your people deep into our hearts so that we may learn to trust you beyond our fears. Give us hearts and minds and spirits ready to trust and follow wherever your spirit leads, confident that you will not lead us beyond your loving embrace. We ask all this in Jesus' name, whose outstretched arms welcome us and hold us securely in your grace. Amen. Friends, our lives are full of mistakes and errors, places where we follow self-generated idols rather than following in God's ways. But we are not alone in these mistakes. All of those who have come before us have also struggled with temptation and sin. So let us come before God, just as generations of believers before us have done, turning to God in a time of confession, praying for God's forgiveness. Let us pray. 
beloved God, known to our forebearers of the faith, have mercy on us. We do not always love as you would have us love. We do not always do as you would have us do. In our stubbornness, we turn from you when we should turn toward you. Forgive us and hold us. Comfort us when we mourn the passing of friends and family and help us to know that they are rejoicing in your presence. We praise you for the grace that you shower on us, constantly forgiving our errors, especially the ones that we do not share with anyone but you. Hear now the silent fears and worries of our heart. Beloved God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Like our ancestors who came before us, we do not follow God's ways perfectly, but we trust in the one who did. Jesus lived God's ways through every word and through every deed. And Jesus taught our ancestors and he teaches us that the God we serve is a God of forgiveness and grace. Friends, let us rejoice as those saints who have come before us rejoiced. Let us rejoice trusting that we are loved, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, Highland friends, and welcome to this time for young disciples. I want to invite the children to come a little closer to their screens. Even some of you adults can come a little closer, too. Today is All Saints Sunday. It's a day when we remember the saints of the church. In a little while, we'll be hearing more about the saints of Highland, those who have died and the impact that they have had on the life of our church. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the saints that are still among us. When we want to remember certain things, important people or important events, sometimes we light a candle. Now, of course, you would only want to do this when there's adult, an adult with you. But a candle helps us to focus. Many of you will remember stories where Jesus um, was, being, um, was teaching and doing amazing things and saying amazing things, and people followed him until they couldn't stand it any longer and they had to ask him, who are you? And he said, I am the light. Well, we remember Jesus as the light and we also remember that Jesus shares that light. And when we receive Jesus' light, we do some of the things that Jesus did, like reaching out to those who were lonely, helping the poor, visiting people, and just being kind and compassionate. Now, I know these days are a little more difficult because we are having to be distanced from one another, but I want you to know that the stories in the Bible that tell us all about the saints and those who listened to God and who followed Jesus. We have those stories and we can go back to them 
and they're important for us. They're a part of our faith. But there are also some stories, again, that God has given us, and the gift of being surrounded by saints. This is the directory for Highland Church, and it's filled with the faces and the names, and each story each picture is a story about how the people of Highland are being saints right here on earth. So I want you to remember that not only are we surrounded by saints, you are a saint. When you follow the teachings of Jesus, when you listen to the stories of Jesus, and you try to take them to heart. That's the way we are saints, saints to one another, holding the light and carrying the light out into the world where it is needed so desperately. So remember, little saints of Highland, you are beloved. As we come to our scriptures this day, let us first turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon us. With your word, open the eyes of our hearts that we might receive these words and be sent to live as agents of your hope and mission for this world. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this day comes from Psalm 34, reading verses 1 through 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament lesson for this day comes from Matthew's Gospel, the first 12 verses of chapter 5. This is the opening to the Sermon on the Mount. Let us hear God's word to us. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute, persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For many, as we read or hear these words from Matthew, we hear a list that sounds exhausting. More to add to our checklist of how to be a better Christian. More to do to live a moral life, the beatitude kind of life. More ethical demands of would-be Christians. More, we should be like, we should do this. More, more, more. It's exhausting. We are already exhausted enough, please, not the Beatitudes. But that is our scripture for this day. So let's take a closer look. A literal translation of the word which our text uses uses as blessed, a literal translation would be, oh, the blessedness of. Oh, the blessedness of the poor in spirit. Oh, the blessedness of those who mourn. Oh, the blessedness of the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart. Oh, the blessedness of. Well, that way of hearing it helps us understand that this is not a list of demands. It's not more shoulds. It's not meant to be a burden. But rather, these beatitudes are a gift from God. These beatitudes, oh, the blessedness of. They are life-giving treasure lavished upon God's children by our loving and life-giving God. This life-giving treasure is given despite adversities. Heard this way, the Beatitudes invite us to imagine what the kingdom of heaven is like. Oh, the blessedness of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The peacemakers, those who were persecuted, the reviled. When heard as life-giving treasure, they draw a sharp contrast between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. A world to which we so often unconsciously pledge our allegiance. One scholar describes this opening to the Sermon on the Mount as a thunderclap. These opening words are meant to contradict directly conventional wisdom. The world seems to favor those who look out for themselves, the miserly, the prideful, those who rely on strength and swords and cunning. But in truth, Jesus contends, divine blessing attends the gentle and the merciful. Those who do the right thing, even and especially when the odds seem stacked against them. Peacemakers in a world infatuated with war. Visionaries in a world that routinely persecutes prophets. The kingdom of the world might say it might operate like this. Blessed are the rich in things and in self-assurance. Blessed are those untouched by loss. Blessed are the powerful. Blessed are those who are realistic about righteousness and compromise at every turn. Blessed are those who demand and extract an eye for an eye. Blessed are the crafty and opportunistic. 
Blessed are those bold enough to make war. Blessed are those who, doing good things, receive many accolades. Blessed are those who, following Jesus, are praised and adored. Jesus' words in this opening to the Sermon on the Mount definitely draw a sharp contrast between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. But Jesus tells us that God's kingdom is happening right now, even in our midst, even though we might not see it very clearly. God's life-giving gift of blessedness is here among us, despite what we might usually see, despite the ways of the world. This lavish gift from God is what we should look for. It is where we should be grounded. The saints who have gone before us knew this life-giving gift. They grounded themselves in that blessedness in the midst of a world which tried to tell them otherwise. We see it in their faithful lives. On this All Saints Day, we celebrate those saints from Highland who have died since in this last year. We celebrate this year Mary Lib Gildersleeve, Don Smith, Sam Blythe, Jan Wilson, Ruby Linville, Helen Dent, Sylvia Hale, Phyllis Boone, Bill Hammond, and Briarly Maddox. These saints are ones who didn't seek the accolades of the world. They served. They served here at Highland. They served their families. They served this community. And they served long and well. The average number of years that these saints were a part of Highland is 46.3. That's the average for these 10. They served long and well. They served as officers and office volunteers, as note writers and bakers. They served as supporters of Hispanic ministry and studiers of the Bible. More than one of these saints can be described as spunky. They were faithful, they were dedicated, they were lovers of God's creation. Some of them were lifelong Presbyterians. They had deep and grounded faith. These saints of God didn't just live happy-go-lucky lives. They didn't thrive by the standards of the world. They weren't powerful or untouched by loss. They weren't rich in things or crafty or opportunistic. They didn't live by the kingdom of this world. They didn't seek after the accolades of the world, but instead they knew mourning and humility. They hungered for justice, and they worked for peace. They knew the life-giving treasure of God in spite of adversities and conventional wisdom. Blessed were they, and blessed are we, for knowing them and having them share a part of our church families for so long. All Saints Day reminds us with sure and certain hope that these people of faith who have gone before us lived through many ordeals and remained steadfast in their loyalty to Christ and their love for neighbor and the world. As Jill Duffield writes, we need to remember the great cloud of witnesses 
and the members of every tribe and nation over the vast expanse of time who refused to succumb to the lesser but so appealing gods of vengeance, hate, and cynicism. We see this loyalty to the kingdom of God over the kingdom of this world in those saints who have gone before us. But we also see it in the saints who are among us now, those who remain faithful despite present adversities, those who model humble, merciful lives, those who work tirelessly for peace and righteousness, those who live with a vision of the kingdom of heaven here and now, those who live like this kingdom is already among us. We need to look for and we need to look to these saints, those before us and those among us now, for they remind us that God is at work no matter how things might appear. God has ordained the deep emerging order of creation, though the world tries to tell us otherwise. Jesus declared the dawning reign of God and made clear that the truly blessed are ultimately and actually the gentle, the merciful, the peacemakers, those who hunger for righteousness. Oh, the blessedness of these saints before us and in our midst. Jesus has promised to help us find our bearings as we live sharing God's life-giving treasure, as we too seek to live into God's kingdom hopes. Friends, may we look to and for these saints, but may we ultimately look to Jesus, who leads us in this kingdom life. May it be so with us this day, this week, this season. Let us pray. Amen. As we turn to our litany of saints on this All Saints Sunday, we recognize that our grief has been made more complicated this year by the pandemic that has so disrupted our lives and our life together. We have not been able to grieve in any of our usual ways. This has been the case not only with the loved ones of many of Highland saints whom we remember this day, but also with our own family members and friends. But let us take heart. For just as God did not lose these saints in giving them to us, so we have not truly lost them in their return to God. Trusting that this good news is true, let us now turn in a spirit of prayer and thanksgiving to our remembrance of these saints. God, our Creator, we praise you for the saints, for saints who have gone before us, for saints who are in our midst, for the sainthood of all. God of love, we thank you for the saints who have loved us, for the families through whom we were created, the people who first loved us and taught us of your love, for relatives and friends who responded to our needs, for relatives and friends who needed our love, for matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, and priests, for disciples, apostles, leaders, and servants, for pastors and missionaries, deacons and elders, for teachers and healers, clerks and cooks. God, to whom we come in faith, 
We thank you for the faith of the saints, for Abraham and Sarah, Mary and Joseph, for Hannah and Elijah, Elizabeth and John, for Augustine and Catherine of Siena, Mother Teresa and Sojourner Truth, for Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Knox, and John Witherspoon, for pastors of Highland, George Staples, Jean Kirkman, Ben Kirkland, Malcolm Anderton, and Jim Banbury, for all those beloved saints in our lives whose names we speak now in our hearts. God, who has gathered us as saints, we remember the saints who have gone before us this past year. Mary Lib Gildersleeve. Don Smith. Sam Blythe. Jan Wilson. Ruby Linville. Helen Dent. Sylvia Hale. Phyllis Boone. Bill Hammond. Briarly Maddox. And we remember with gratitude our own loved ones who having given their witness now abide in your care. We commit ourselves to build on their gifts of faith that future saints might rejoice in the foundation we have prepared for them. We lift up to you our prayers for those we have lost in our lives, in our communities, our nation, and our world from this COVID-19 pandemic. We ask comfort and strength for the families of those who have gone on to join the heavenly host. You surround us with saints in every moment, even these days which seem never to end, if we but open our hearts to see your presence. We continue to bless you, holy God, as we try to do every day, all day long. You surround us with saints in every moment, even these times which seem overwhelming, if we but open our souls to pay attention. God in community, holy in one, it is your hope which wipes away every tear, your grace which restores our souls, your mercy which makes us one with you, even as we pray, as we have been taught to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. How could we withhold our gifts of gratitude in the face of such wondrous love? 
With glad and generous hearts, let us bring forth our offerings, sharing the gifts that God has so graciously shared with us. Let us pray. God of the generations, we marvel at your faithfulness. You keep your promise to remain with us by your Holy Spirit. Help us to trust you in every difficulty. Empower us to share the good news of your abiding presence with our neighbors and friends. Accept our offerings, building up this community of faith so that we may serve others with the love of Jesus in this time and for years to come. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, saints of God, may you go forth from this time of worship determined to share glimpses of God's kingdom, for you too are blessed. And as you go, knowing that our one God, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, goes with you and blesses you each step of your way, this day and forevermore. Thanks be to God. Amen.